In this video, we're going to explore the Google TS Mixer architecture, this innovative approach for time series forecasting. The first thing that we need to do is to understand the basics. The bottom line is that the TS Mixer is inspired by the transformer architecture, but is specifically tailored for time series data. For those who don't know, the transformer architecture is what um, for instance, OpenAI uses in the GPT. The T is for the transformer uh, architecture. And while um, the transformers have really revolutionized the fields like NLP for natural language processing uh, by capturing relationships in sequences, their direct application for time series data isn't always optimal due to the computational complexities and the nature of temporal dependencies. Um, if we are to have a quick preview of the architecture, let's compare the transformer block with the TS mixer uh, block. And in the transformer block, uh, we have a multi-head attention uh, for the, this is the time domain. So this component allows the model to weigh the influence of different time steps on each other. It learns relationships across the entire sequence, enabling the model to focus on relevant parts of the input when generating predictions. And then we add the add and norm. So this is for the residual connection and normalization. So after the multi-head attention, the model adds the input back to the output of the attention layer. So this is a residual connection and then normalizes the result. This helps to stabilize the training and allows for deeper networks. We have as well the feed forward uh, for feature domain. This model uh, processes the data through a feed forward and this transforms the features at each time step independently. And then we have the add a norm as well once more. So another residual layer connecting and normalizing. When it comes to the TS mixer model, so instead of a multi-head attention, uh, we have a time mixing layer. And this layer processes sequences over time, capturing temporal dependencies without the heavy computational load of attention mechanisms. We have as well the add a norm so this is similar we have a residual connection and normalization then we have the feed forward which is slightly different um, it focuses on feature mixing and this layer handles uh, interactions between the different features allowing the model to capture cross feature uh, dependencies it's very important and then as well we have an add a norm this is the final residual connection and normalization uh, to complete the block. Let's summarize in terms of key differences and innovations. So the primary innovation uh, of the TS mixer architecture is the replacement of the multi-head attention mechanism with a time mixing layer. This changes significantly and reduces the computational uh, complexity. If we zoom in then on the time mixing layer, uh, it's designed to capture temporal dependencies by mixing information across different time steps. Mathematically, uh, it is represented as H time and then sigma. And here X um, is the input sequence. Um, then we have W time is the weight matrix that mixes time steps. The B time is a bias term and the sigma is the activation function uh, like ReLU. And this feature effectively learns how different time steps influence each other, capturing patterns like trends and seasonality without you know, having to rely on the attention mechanisms. And then as well, it's noteworthy to explore the feature mixing layer as well. After processing temporal dependencies, the TS mixer focuses on feature uh, interactions through the feature mixing layer. And this layer operates along the feature dimension, allowing the model to learn relationships between different variables. Mathematically, it works like this. Um, the output is this H uh, feature. The H time comes from before, right? So this is the connection. We have an output that is normalized and then goes into this feature mixing layer. 
uh, W uh, feature here mixes or you know connects the features, and then the B feature, um, this is the bias term. Then the sigma is the activation of the real. And then when it comes to the residual connections and normalizations, uh, these are critical components that help in training deep neural networks by mitigating issues like vanishing gradients and ensuring stable conversions. And after each major operation, um, time mixing and feature mixing, the model adds the input back to the output. And it works like this. We have the output, we have this layer normalization that takes the input and the output. And this operation helps the model to retain essential information from previous layers and maintain a numerical stability during training. The next thing I want to cover um, is now the advantages of the TS mixer architecture. Um, first one would be efficiency. And by replacing the multi-head attention with time mixing, the model uh, reduces computational complexity. It's specialized for time series. This is always important. Um, we have quite a bit of models for sequence data. And of course, time series is a sequence data, but it's a specific type of sequence data where time plays a big role and not necessarily just the sequence. And we will have simplicity and interpretability. When it comes to the practical applications, the TS mixer architecture can handle long sequences. Um, we can do it for you know long time series without having to run into computational bottlenecks. Uh, we can handle complex interactions, uh, so capturing both temporal and feature interactions across time, and we can improve uh, training stability. So we can benefit from residual connections and normalization. Uh, to conclude, the Google TS Mixer represents uh, quite an, uh, an improvement for time series uh, forecasting because it's rethinking an architecture for uh, time series uh, data. And we have covered Gen AI specifically for time series data, and this is as well Gen AI for time series data, but it's an adapted and not just you know a one-to-one -one, uh, implementation. Uh, by going through this section and seeing how it works, I'm sure that you'll see where it can be valuable to you and to your projects. I'll see you in the next video.